Hey guys, for those of you that are new, I'm Amanda, and this channel exists to shatter the mental health stigma, so we can discuss some pretty heavy topics here, including suicide. But I want to give an extra warning today that not only will I be discussing suicidal ideation, but I will also be sharing some clips from a video I took last week when I was in that frame of mind. And some viewers might find it disturbing. You might not be in the right frame of right mind right now to watch this. So I just wanted to let you know so you can make that decision for yourself. If you're watching this video, it means that this is the last video on my channel because I just can't do this anymore. I can't live in this world without my daughter, without my parents, knowing that love isn't real, knowing all the damage I've done and the people I've hurt. I never meant to be a monster. I never meant to hurt anyone. <laughs> I'm so sorry to anyone that I've let down. I know that this was nothing that you guys did or could have prevented. And I just can't take any more loss, any more pain, any more betrayal. I feel like I'm in a world that I don't know which way's up, which way's down. I don't know who's wearing a mask and who's not. And I wish desperately that there was something that I could say. So that my life would matter. So that I could make an impact on this. On the mental health world. I've had everything taken from me. I am so sorry. I hope you can understand. This is really hard to share because I feel like I'm supposed to be the beacon. I'm supposed to be healed. I'm supposed to be leading people out of the darkness, not falling back into it myself. There's this imposter syndrome, right? That I feel, how can I help others if I'm in this place? Nobody's gonna listen to me if I fell back into this darkness. Nobody's gonna take me seriously. They're not going to see the value of the content I have to offer or of my course or whatever the case is because I'm terrified that people are now gonna see me as a failure in some sense that the things that had helped me heal so much and had helped me come so far and all the skills that I implemented and all the skills that I tell you guys to implement, it still almost led to this. And I'm, I'm really afraid that now people aren't going to find value in the content, that they're not going to say, hey, this stuff can help us heal because people see healing as this linear thing they don't understand that you can fall back into it but you can still also get back up again just like we have so many times because we've survived 100 percent of those bad days if you're here and you're watching this video that means that we've survived 100 percent of those moments of ideation of those times where we just felt like we couldn't do it anymore but then there's also that part of me that's going this isn't how I want others to perceive me. This isn't even how I want to perceive myself. This isn't the way I want to show up in the world. I want to show up as that strong, independent woman that has it figured out, that has this strong skill set, that doesn't deal with depression and anxiety and stuff anymore. Haha, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's never going to be a point where my shadow just goes away, I don't think. There's never going to be a point where I am not more emotionally susceptible than most people, than, than neurotypical people. I get that. I accept that. I didn't expect this. I didn't see this coming. I didn't think that things could get this bad again because it's been so long. But like I said, I should have known this can happen to people who have never experienced mental health issues before. This can happen to people who have been who have gone years and years and years without having any sort of symptoms like that. With that being said, I filmed this last Thursday. Today is Tuesday. I decided on Sunday that I wanted to share this in some capacity here on the channel because it's an important part of my story. And that's part of what the channel is about, is me sharing my mental health story through reactions, through vlogs, whatever the case is. But I also want to talk about this because 
I don't think people realize that it doesn't really matter how much healing you do. It doesn't matter how much therapy you go through. It doesn't matter how many skills or tools you have in your toolbox. It is entirely possible to fall back into that ideation. It's entirely possible that circumstances just become so heavy and so unmanageable and so intense and so relentless that we can fall back into that. Because even people that never experienced mental health struggles, that never experienced depression or suicidal ideation, certain circumstances can happen that bring them to that place. So this does not discriminate based on your history or how much gratitude you do. Because by the way, I do a gratitude app every single day, and I think I'm at something like 946 days of consistent gratitude. I'm grateful. <laughs> it's not about a lack of gratitude. If I ramble, it is what it is. I'm not even going to apologize for it because I just want to get this out. I just want to share. I just want to talk. I just want to be candid. I might edit a few times just to clip out long pauses where I'm reflecting so you guys don't have to stare at me staring at the wall. But when this happens, when we get to this point, right now I am feeling so much shame and guilt about hurting people because I didn't mean to hurt people. The whole point is I don't want to hurt people. And I already felt guilt for all of the pain that I've caused but then I end up causing more pain just by having this ideation, just by getting pushed to this point. And I also feel embarrassed because I have all these tools and skills and I feel like I'm strong. I don't need people to tell me that. I feel like I'm strong. But even the strongest person in the world can only carry so much weight. They have a limit. And I feel like I was pushed up against the wall. I feel like I hit my limit. I feel like I was holding the bar and weight just kept getting put on it. And I didn't know what else to do. And right now, I swear to God, I'm feeling like every emotion possible. I don't even know how all these emotions can fit in here. But I'm feeling anger at the people that I feel like didn't respect me or didn't care about me. And I'm feeling hurt and feeling isolated and feeling like I'm just disposable, like I didn't matter, like I'm not worth fighting for. There's this anger toward the people that I feel contributed to me being in this state. There's the sadness for people not being what I want them to be or what I feel like I need them to be or not showing up in the way that I want them to show up, not showing the emotions I want them to show or acting in the way I want them to act or that I would act or that I think is the way that love should be expressed or that friendship should be expressed or I just feel so many conflicting feelings about everything and everyone, myself, the people close to me, I'm just so, I'm so kerbobbled. <laughs> there's so much confusion because there's the relief that I'm still here. There's the resentment that I'm still here. There's this conflict in my head going, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to feel. I don't know what to think. I don't know what my next step should be. So there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of confusion surrounding who do I trust? Who do I turn to? Who do I talk to? Who can help? What should my next steps be? Should I take next steps? Should I just lay down and take a break? Should I lean into other things? There's a lot of confusion about the best things to do. Should I find another therapist? Should I double down on some of the things that I'm doing? There's just a million questions swimming in my head and <laughs> it's keeping me up at night again. I just don't know. I don't know. And that terrifies me. That pains me to say I don't know because I want people to perceive me as the person that has the answers. You know, I want my son to look at me and say, mama always knows, mama always has the answers. I want people here in the community to say, well, a man has been through this, she'll be able to help, she can know. I want you guys to look at me, or look to me for help and support. And I'm really, really scared that 
I can't be that for you anymore because I believe I can, but now I'm scared that you don't perceive me as that person. And that would absolutely break my heart. And I know part of this is being seen through the lens of the depression that I fell into. But another part of it is because this is so tricky. Because when someone gets to the point where they're suicidal, they have different needs. Not everybody is going to have the same needs. Some people just need someone to talk to. They need to know they're not alone. They need to know that they have someone in their corner, right? That they can just sit down and trauma dump and let it all out. That's totally fine. And there are some people who really need someone to tell them that everything's going to be okay. They just want that reassurance. They want to see hope, to feel hope. They want hope. <laughs> and that was part of it. There, there was a part of me that wanted hope because I started realizing that the things I had just didn't feel like enough. I felt like I was in this world where I couldn't trust my own perception. I didn't feel love. I, I, I felt like love wasn't real. I was desperately missing my daughter and my parents and all these people that I've lost and all these places I've lost. I was even thinking about, I can't even go back to my hometown and see my home anymore because it doesn't exist. And it just started feeling like nothing existed. That was my perspective at the time. Like nothing was real, nothing good existed in my life anymore. And even though I have these things like school and I have this community and I have a lot of good things, it just wasn't balancing on the scale to the things that I lost, to the pain I was feeling at the time. And I really just could not, for the first time since 2018, I could not see another side to all of this. And some people, when they're in this place, we're talking about people that might just need someone to talk to, people that might need someone to tell them everything's going to be okay, some people need a professional, which I've been going to a therapist to do EMDR and to do talk therapy. And I stopped a few weeks ago after he told me, we can't do trauma healing because these traumatic things keep happening to you. And until you get a break in that, we really can't delve into your past and work on healing these things because the situations that are happening are related in some abstract way to past traumas, to that sense of loss, to that sense of abandonment. So the mental health professional straight out said, I don't know what to do right now because you know the skills, you have the skills, you have the tool set, you are incredibly self-aware, you know what you should be doing and you're doing it. You're, you're doing all of the right things and all of these life situations keep stacking on you and keep happening to you. So I didn't even have that outlet. Before you suggest medications, I've tried dozens of those in the past and they always had really bad side effects, um, right down to hallucinations, to I couldn't breathe, I'd just be laying on the floor gasping for breath. It was a nightmare. It caused the worst association, even at kids' doses. So that wasn't it for me. And Granted, I've been less physically active than normal lately, but I'm still moving my body. I'm still getting outside. I'm still eating healthy. Although during this last week, I ate a piece of gluten-free toast and two bananas over the course of several days. That is not like me at all. Usually when I spiral into a depression episode or I, I get to the point of being suicidal, I've never been to the point of not eating and not sleeping, yeah, and I, I didn't sleep, um, and that's fairly normal, but the not eating was not. So that was something that really set this time apart from other times. And the other thing that sets this apart is I literally drafted my own will and testament. I'd never done that, even when I got to the point before of deleting myself. That's a step I never took. And these things scare me. They genuinely scare me because it means that it's different this time. It's more serious this time. I don't know. I just know that it's different and it's creating a lot of fear in me. 
The only reason I am still here is because the notary wasn't in on Fridays. That's why I'm still here. Because I planned to have this paperwork notarized on Friday and when my son went elsewhere that night to check out. And I am still here because the notary that I knew of, that I've used in the past, was not in on Fridays. And I did not have the energy to call around and find someplace else. So it was just, you know what, I'm going to lay down and pass time until they are available. Uh, so that's what I did was just lay down and put my headset on and kind of disappeared from the world. Just checked out. I got a, <laughs> I got a actual CD player for my birthday from my boyfriend. And I just laid on my bed and was listening to Linkin Park. I wish there was more structure to this video, to this discussion. And again, I know it's a bit all over the place, but my brain is a bit all over the place right now. But we're talking about how some people are looking to talk. Some people need a therapist. Some people just need someone to tell them everything's okay. But some people need solutions and they need action and they need... They need things to come off of their plate. They need things to stop falling on them. For the last year, it just feels like I've been pelted relentlessly with all of these really heavy things, a lot of which dealing with grief and loss. And it came to a point where they were getting faster and they were getting heavier. And finally, my shield was just compromised. I just could not deflect all of the stuff happening anymore. And I wanted a solution. I am a really solution-driven person, so sometimes, yeah, I just feel down, I just feel discouraged, and I need a pep talk. I need someone to tell me, hey, I care about you, I'm here to listen, let's just talk it out. And a lot of the times that really helps. Sometimes I need a therapist to give me professional perspective, this is what you're doing wrong, Amanda. But sometimes I need to find a solution that I can't find on my own. And that's where I was at was I shut everyone out during this time. I typically actually don't do that either. I typically will reach out to people. I'm not one to shut people out for long periods. Sometimes I'll go take a couple hours for myself or something so that I can recalibrate. But for the most part, I don't shut off from my friends. And when I came back to my phone after a couple of days of being in this state of mind, being in this darkness, I had eight missed text messages. So now I'm feeling more shame and guilt because I'm going, oh my gosh, people are worried about me. And I know people care. It wasn't even an issue of, of feeling like people didn't care. Maybe an issue of feeling like people wouldn't really fight, that it was just kind of a, oh no, don't do that. Uh, but I knew that people cared on some level, so that wasn't even the issue. But when I saw that number, it actually started giving me more anxiety because I went, oh my gosh, how am I going to respond to all this right now? I don't have the energy. I don't have the, I don't have the cognition to know what to say. Because let me tell you, if you've never experienced this, it is physically exhausting. It is like running a freaking marathon by the time you come out of it because you have exerted all of your energy trying to find a way out of the darkness. So you've just been running and running and running in this dark area trying to find a door and by the time you finally do find a door or you do at least sit down, you are so spent I can't even put it into words. It's indescribable. I work out pretty frequently. I've ran before several miles at a time. I've done pretty intense workouts and nothing compares to the physical exhaustion of coming out of a depressive episode or coming out of a episode of suicidal ideation. It's just so incredibly soul sucking and you feel like you're mentally spent and you're physically spent and my soul is just weary right now. My soul can't take anymore. And I know a lot of people are going to say, okay, Amanda, take a break. Take a break from school. Take a break from the channel. But that's not going to fix this. <laughs> it's not going to make this any better because those things anchor me. Those things give me purpose. Those things give me outlets. So the taking a break, I am taking a break in my own ways. And I'm, I'm cutting out things that I don't 
need or that I don't want to align with. And I've been doing that for the last year. So that's not the issue. The issue is these big traumatic events keep happening. I don't feel like I'm making any progress through them. And I feel like they're just coming at me so fast and so hard that I don't have time to recharge my battery before the next one hits. So I had three really big ones hit all within about a month. And I just, what? I feel like that was just one big run on sentence, but it isn't too much on my plate with the voluntary stuff like school or this uh, channel, this community. It's the unexpected trauma and grief and stress and the fact that they're all really big things. It's not just this person I went to high school with passed away and that's sad. It's these really huge things. And I will say that the overwhelm of trying to catch up once you've been in one of these episodes can be really daunting in and of itself. Because now I'm going, okay, I didn't film anything. I have sponsors to keep up with this month. So I still have several bits of sponsored content to film. I need to get something out. And th th let me be clear that this isn't something that I'm filming just to get content out. This is something that I'm filming because I want to. I was going to film some reactions this week anyway. But <laughs> trying to say, okay, I didn't really clean. I didn't really take care of things. I didn't really do my content. I didn't even do my homework. Okay. <laughs> if you guys know me at all, I'm a 4.0 student. I take my homework seriously. I always have, even in grade school or junior high, high school. I always took my homework very seriously. I always did my best. I will say after I was sexually assaulted when I was 16, I stopped caring right before I dropped out of high school. But otherwise, I actually always do my homework early, really early. I, I, I get my assignment Sunday night and I'm doing my assignment Sunday morning as, or Monday morning as much as possible so that I don't stress about it throughout the week. I... <laughs> It's finals week for me right now for the semester, and I was struggling Sunday night to get through my final papers and my different projects and stuff that I had to do because I put it off. So none of these behaviors are like me. None of these things that happened are like me. They're not even like my previous episodes. It's just, it feels so weird. I've never not care. Even when I was heavy in addiction, even when I was in the throes of addiction, I never just not cared about the things that are important to me, like school. I never just not cared about my life, but I did. I just stopped caring. And so Sunday night, I'm spiraling to try to catch up with the homework I didn't do. And I actually ended up being late on one assignment. So I lost some points on that, which stressed me out more because I'm going, oh my God, am I going to lose my 4.0 now? Uh, that's really important to me. And it's, it's really difficult to try to catch up. And I wish that I knew what my next steps are. I can say that right now I'm safe. I'm not in a good state of mind, but I'm safe. I got up this morning, I took a shower, I, I got ready. I'm going to class today. I'm trying to work on my projects and stuff. I'll be filming some more reactions and releasing more reactions um, over the course of the next couple of weeks. But I fell behind. Usually I fell my stuff in advance and I just didn't uh, fill my stuff in advance. So I wish that I could say, hey, here's what I'm going to do and here's my plan. But I don't really know. Right now, my priority is staying safe and not falling behind, getting through finals week, uh, getting content up and stuff. So we'll see. We'll see where that goes. But... I really am just, I'm at such a loss because I know that if I said, hey, right now, this could all be solved if we raise $5,000 here in the community. That's not it at all. That's not, it's not even a money would make this go away or talking would make this go away. Money doesn't buy happiness. That's true. It can buy comfort. It can allow you opportunity to take some things off your plate. For example, you could order a meal if you're just not feeling energy to cook for yourself, or you could hire someone to clean your house if you're just in that 
that headspace and you can't do that. You can hire someone to take the kids for a bit. I just said kids. If that's something that relates to you, you can take a couple of days to just go somewhere else and get out of your normal routine, take a weekend away or something. But that's also things, these are also things that can be done from our friends. <laughs> these are things that we can be doing with our friends. We can reach out and ask, or likewise, people can offer if they know someone's struggling, if they know a loved one is struggling, offer to get them a meal, offer to help clean up, offer to take care of things for them. That can be very helpful. Offer to just go and sit in the middle of nowhere with them and stare at the stars and soundboard and, and try and help them come up with solutions. Those are all uh, things that friends can do. That's not necessarily just something that can be solved by money. So money isn't always the thing that people need the most. There are financial struggles. I'm having a lot of financial struggles. That's not to say that it's not part of the problem, but money wouldn't solve everything here. I I don't want to talk right now because it's exhausting. I don't want to talk to my friends. I don't want to talk to my partner. I don't want to talk to a therapist because I don't feel like that's where I'm at. I don't feel like that's what I need. I feel like I need to take a step back and figure out, okay, Amanda, how do you solve these problems? What are your next steps? I have to find solutions. I have to figure out a way to get through these losses that all hit at once. I have to figure out a way through that. I have no idea how to wrap up this video. I have no idea if I said everything I should say or if I even said everything I wanted to say. I feel like I'm going to walk away and think of a million things that I should have said. But I spent all of yesterday avoiding making this video. I literally did everything in my power. I know y'all can relate to that where you know you have to do something and then you do everything in your power, not have to, want to, even if you want to, either or. You want to do something, you have to do something, but your shadow starts kicking up and you will do literally everything else. You will scrub your kitchen floor with a toothbrush before <laughs> doing this one thing that takes far less time because it takes so much mental energy. And I was scared and I'm still scared and I don't know how I'm going to push the publish button. But like I said, I wanted to check in. I wanted to let be honest and let you know where I'm at. And let you know that it's okay to fall into these places. It is normal when life circumstances start hitting you, start pelting you, and you just can't seem to get away from this loop, from the trauma, from the loss, when you can't seem to get away from it. It's normal for your brain to go there. It's normal to say, you know what? I just don't want to do this anymore. And I didn't. And to be frankly honest, I don't. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want to deal with the trauma. I don't want to deal with the grief. I don't want to deal with the stress. I don't want to deal with everything that's on my plate. I just don't. But I will. Because I do have to believe that I will get back to a point of things being okay. I have to believe that things are going to work out somehow. <gasps> okay. I feel better getting that off my chest and just being honest with people because I feel like I try to have a balance here on the channel of validating people where they're at, just being willing to listen and giving skills giving functional things, helping people. So if someone can't afford therapy, can't afford medication, I have been known to pay for that here um, in the community. So I feel like I try to have that balance, but I don't feel like the people in my life understand the importance of that. I feel like everyone's go-to, and this is, I'm not saying anything nasty. I love my friends and they've been so incredibly helpful to me. This community has been so incredibly helpful to me, but I'll put it this way. When you have a group of people, you can have your best friend that you go to because you know they'll be honest with you. Or you have your significant other that you might go to because you know that they're going to build you up. Or you have that one friend that you go to when you need someone to help you clean your house or talk to you while you clean your house or whatever the case is. You have different friends for different things. It's, it's totally natural. But I feel like I need someone right now to help me figure things out. And I don't feel like I have 
that role filled in my life. So as much as I appreciate everyone saying, I'm here for you and I want to talk to you, I know, I see you and I appreciate you so, so much. And there will be times when I'm going to reach out to you and I'm going to say, hey, I'm cashing in on that. But right now, it's a matter of I need to genuinely figure things out. I can't just say, okay, I'm going to vent about it. I'm going to talk about it. I have to figure things out. And I don't know what that's going to look like, but it's going to happen, okay? It's going to happen. Of course, there's a desire for help. I'm not denying help. I'm not being stubborn. I'm not in a place where I'm saying I'm too far gone. I'm too good for this. I don't need this. I don't want this. I'm not in that place. I'm willing to accept help. I just don't know what to do. And I came here to this place. I was here in this place in 2018 where it was just, I don't know what to do. And I had to kind of restructure my life. And that's what my course is about, is the stuff that I did. But it seems like there's a piece missing. There's, it seems like there's something that's blocking me. And I, I take the back. I actually know exactly what it is. It's like I am in a place where I don't feel like I can achieve the life that I want to have and not because I'm not willing to put in the effort, not because I'm not willing to to do what needs to be done, not because I don't have enough money, because there's always more money, we can always earn more money. It's because there's just circumstances that I feel are blocking me because it entails other people. There, There's other things that have to be in place for these things to come into fruition and I can't force another person's hand. I have no control I have very little control. We always have some kind of control, but I have very little control over whether or not I can get some of these things. A good example is I am getting my degree. I'm moving toward that. I'm pursuing my education, but I might not be able to do anything with that because of a felony from two decades ago. And I'm even going as far as to working on changing Arizona law, but I have no control over whether or not lawmakers decide to do anything. There's so many examples of this where it's just these things I want are largely in the hands of other people. So I'm doing everything I can and I feel like I'm not making any any forward movement or at least not enough forward movement to counteract all of the stuff pushing me down. So I just feel very stuck. I feel very frustrated. I feel very helpless. I feel so helpless and in many cases in these situations so hopeless. And these are important things to me. These are things that I want to be part of my life. It's not that I'm ungrateful for other things, but these are things that I want to be a big part of my life. And if I can't have these things, I don't know how to create a fulfilling life. And I know you guys can understand that because you've lost something and you've been unable to achieve something. And we have this toxic ass hustle culture that says, well, if you want to get what you want, just work harder. I will be the first person to say that that is garbage. There are certain things in your life that you can work and work and work, and you're not going to get what you want. Plain and simple. You're not going to get what you want, especially if what you really want is someone that's not here anymore because you've lost someone, like my parents or something like that. I want my parents, but no amount of hustling is going to bring them back, and no amount of hustling is going to take that pain away. Sure, I can process, I can, I can get to a point where I can function, but I'm never going to stop missing them. That pain's never going to go away. Thank you all for holding space for me while I share this with you. It was not easy. My heart is racing. I physically feel nauseous right now. My anxiety symptoms are all over the place. I started having panic attacks again last week, which is something that I haven't dealt with regularly. I have had some over the last year because, like I said, the last year's been very overwhelming. But it's something I haven't dealt with regularly, so it kind of threw me off because when you've gone a long time without cravings for your addiction or without a panic attack or without going into suicidal ideation. It's been years for me since I've gone into that spiral. I mean, sometimes, let me take that back. There are times where you just go, oh man, I don't want to do this anymore. And the thought crosses in your mind, but it's not something that you lean into. You don't make a plan. You do, That's why when you go to a professional, they ask you different questions to see where you're at on the spectrum of suicidal ideation. So there are times where I'm way down here of just you know what? I don't have to exist. And then it's just a fleeting thought and it goes away. But this time it was way over here of I have a plan. I am doing things to execute this plan. 
it was bad. It was really bad. But now it's navigating through the aftermath, the feelings of shame and guilt and embarrassment, navigating through my feelings, coming up with solutions, making a new action plan. That's what I have to do right now. If you are feeling things like this, if you're in that dark place, know that the best of us get there, regardless of our skill set, regardless of our lifestyle, the best of us get there. And I have to believe, even though my shadow does not believe this right now, but I have to tell myself that there's another side to it again because I've seen the other side to it many times. So I'm going to take some time to reflect. I'm going to take some time to try to come up with a new action plan to try to resolve these things. And let's see where I'm at in a month. I'm going to make another vlog. I'm promising you guys. So hold me accountable. I'm going to make another vlog in a month. So 30 days from now, today is April 16th. So 30 days from now, I'm going to make another vlog about where I'm at and the things that I've done or haven't done. Hold me to that, okay? Hold me accountable for that vlog because I want to be able to check in again. I love you guys so much. Again, thank you for holding space for me and I will see you soon. Mwah.